Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to the 10,000 subscriber special on my channel. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at building and preparing Dragon's 135th Fitman's Ace Crew. So this set came out in 2016 and it was the bonus figures included in one of their Tiger releases and now it's an individual set. So the details are actually quite nice on this figure set and a lot of the Dragon Modern sets of the last maybe two or three years have not been good for their figures. Uh, I recently got their Rommel Command set and it's absolute garbage, whereas this set is actually really nice. So we're going to start taking you through how I actually prepare and build figures for my painting tutorials. So first things first, I'm going to start removing them from the sprue. I'm just using some um, Exxon or Scion, uh, whatever the hell they're called, uh, cutters. So a nice pair of cutters are pretty handy here. And once they're cut off the sprues, we're going to start removing the seam lines. So the seam lines are a byproduct of the moulding process and they run the entire length of each piece. I'm just using a hobby blade here. Some people use the back of hobby blades, but I just use a fresh blade, apply the weight of the blade to the model. I'm not pushing down on the plastic, I'm just paring away the seam lines. And it's quite easy to identify seam lines as they'll run the entire length of a of a piece, whether it be the leg, the arm, the torso, what have you. Once again, I'm just removing these larger tabs from the from the trees or from the sprues. And I try to follow the contours of the creases and the uh, folds as much as possible, so I don't remove any detail. And once again, it's just hand pressure. I'm not pushing into the model. You shouldn't be cutting away big slots of plastic here. And again, I'm just removing the seam on the collar, something that a lot of people miss and it's very noticeable once it's uh, once you paint it up. Now this step does take some time, but as you can see, I just started working my way through. And since there's five figures in this set, it did take me a little bit to work my way through. And again, I'm just trying to follow the, the, the contours and lines here. And you can see how I kind of flick the blade up as I'm cutting, and that kind of encourages me not to cut into the plastic any more than I need to. And once again, I'm going to start working on the hands. So you often get very thick seam lines on the hands of figures. And you can see me starting to scallop out the each finger in a few moments of the hand, just to bring out some detail. Now I'm going to start assembling the model, or the figure, should I say. And for that, I like to use some very slow setting glue. So I'm going to be using the trusty Ravel Contacta. My thoughts are here is I want to keep the glue long setting as possible like you know I want a slow set and I want to try to square as many pieces as possible while the glue is um, wet so you can see me kind of moving and uh, shifting his torso and leg sections together and I want to try to get at least one side of the torso and legs to sit as flush as possible if I have to come in I just want to be able to fill one area if possible so I'm taking my time to try to line it up as best I can I'm going to repeat this for all the figures. So again, I try to line up the leg sections as evenly as possible. And then while the glue is still wet, I'll try to align the torso to the legs and try to get as best a fit as possible so I don't have to come back in and fill later, which we're going to have to either way. And there's actually quite a bit of filling in these figures, especially between... Uh, the, the belt line and the uh, the trousers. And once they're basically put together, I'm gonna to take a piece of balsa wood and I'm gonna use this to align their arms. I'm gonna take the fitment figure and again use contact to glue his arms together. And while the glue is still wet, I'm actually going to make adjustments to his arms to ensure that he's actually um, realistically wrapping his arms around his crew. And one by one, I'm gonna start gluing with a little bit of super glue each crewman to this piece of board. And that's going to ensure that I get an accurate lineup between each arm. As you can see, there's gaps. So I'm just trying to ensure that I get a realistic setup, but you can see we're gonna to have to come in and fill gaps as we go. But right now, we're just going to worry ourselves with the alignment of the arm.
And here we have the poses almost ready now. So it's adding the last arms to the figures. And now we're gonna come in, remove all these now in a few moments and start filling our respective crewmen. So I'm gonna start putting in some of the joints. Now I didn't fill on this part. And normally I use Vallejo putty or Perfect Plastic Putty, which is an acrylic base. But in this case, I didn't have any left. So I had to use some green stuff from Citadel. I'm not a big fan of green stuff, but basically I just uh, applied small amounts to fill the gaps. As you can see, it's a bit quite messy. So now I have to come in with a hobby blade and begin to scribe away any of the areas I don't want. I'm also gonna use a little bit of sanding paper here and there as well. It's not the way I want to do it. The water-based putties are far more advantageous for working with figures than these type of epoxy style putties. But basically when you apply this putty, the water-based putty like Flejo or Perfect Putty as I was saying, if you basically apply it and then dip your finger in water and wipe it away in the same motion, you will basically just clean the seam there and then. It is very simple and it's not as messy or as heavy as this stuff. So you see here I have to, have to come in and do a lot of cleaning to each of these five figures just to blend these seams in. It was an absolute pain in the arse. So with all the joints uh, cleaned, we're going to start mounting our figures to bases. And for this, I'm just going to take a vice drill and drill a hole into each of their feet. The diameter is the equivalent of a paint, or of, should I say, of a paper clip. So I'll just take a paper clip, match it to a diameter of a drill, and just drill a small bit into each of their feet. I'm going to take some Gorilla gel type glue here. Any super glue will do. It doesn't have to be expensive. And just glue a little bit of a paper clip into each of their feet. I just uh, basically I bend a paper clip straight and then just cut it into small sections. And the actual bases themselves are just pieces of balsa wood that I've glued together and then I've rounded the edges to make them easy to hold and more ergonomic. And I just basically glue either end of the pin one part into the foot and then glue the other part into the base and that will stop them from moving. It's a very simple way of doing it. So we're moving on to the priming and I also have to prime my figures, not everyone does, and for this one I'm using Filejo Primer. And especially one of the real reasons I prime, it just allows me to see how well the seams have been filled and do I have to do any more blending work. And in this case, off camera I'm going to have to do quite a bit. Uh, it's one of the real reasons why I actually prime my models. And once the model was primed, I noticed a, a big gap in Fitman's shoulder. And I'm actually just using a bit of the Perfect Putty, which is a water-based. And I just dipped a Q-tip into some water, and I could just literally wipe it away while it's still wet. And the actual putty will stay in the seam. It's so handy. And with that, we have our crew fully built and primed and ready for painting. Now, I will be doing more videos on, these, on this crew, so do join me when we're painting these guys up. And again, when we make a base for them. So guys, again, thank you so much to all of you for subscribing to this channel. I'm so grateful to all of you. And uh, do join me in the future when we get, hopefully we'll go on to new and better projects. So thank you so much, guys. Your support has been amazing these last couple of years. And I hope we have many more happy years too. So thank you so much, my friends. I have been Shane. Happy modeling. And until the next video, bye-bye.